In the previous episode, I mentioned that there's a high chance your favorite CU is going to make a solo debut if they are the face of a 2D music project and have the media and fans openly praising them. In this episode, let's talk a bit about the other way in which you can spot solo debuts with quite some ease, which is basically when Seiyu start losing weight like crazy. Something that is heavily influenced by idol culture. Let's kick off this episode of Seiyu Lounge. Welcome to See You Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is Idol culture influencing Seiyu artists' careers, the diets and visual enhancements. Yes, you heard it well. I've mentioned in the last episode that there's a high chance your favorite Seiyu will make a solo debut if they are the face of a 2D music project or popular because of said project. Have the media and fans been openly praising them about their singing or they start losing weight like crazy? I've already talked a bit about the first two situations, so let's talk a bit about Seiyu losing weight like crazy in order to make solo debuts. So this is where you best notice the influence of idol culture on Seiyu artists. Seiyu used to sing not caring much about meeting a certain visual standard. Their image as voice actors was appreciated by their fans and as such, Seiyu artists in the 90s and early noughties didn't have to care about tailoring looks to meet insane expectations and standards that are or were required by professional or career J-pop stars. Just check the solo debuts of Jurota Kusugi, Inoue Kazuhiko, Shoayami, Koichi Yamadera, Hikaru Midorikawa, or even Kishota Niyama and Tatsisa Suzuki. The focus wasn't on the looks, but on their voice. Well, it should be for Seiyu if the music industry hadn't started to merge with J-pop and thus its insane visual standards wouldn't have started to be required to be met by Seiyu artists. There's a big part of the Seiyu fandom that only cares about looks and at the same time Seiyu are aware that a way to attract more people to their music can start from polishing their looks so more than ever they are investing in those. That's why over the years many Seiyu have drastically changed looks, looking, some would say, better today than they did when they were younger. That's also why many Seiyu, before making a solo debut, start to fix their teeth, treat their skin and start losing weight like crazy to meet the insane standards of Seiyu artists having to be skinny and cute or handsome. Seiyu aren't idols, yet they have been working as if they are. And as sad as it is, that has been the standard since 2017. Why do I mention since 2017? Well, while it was starting to be noticeable by how Mamoru Mienu has been polishing his looks over the years to have a marketable face for TV, it was only a matter of time before the rest of the Seiyuu industry would catch up and Seiyuu artists would all embrace that idea of a marketable face being essential if they want to be popular or at least to stand out. 2017 was the start of a big boom in solo artists. From 2017 to 2019, a total of 9 male Seiyuu made their solo debut. I'm talking about Soma Saito and Tasuku Hatanaki in 2017, Yumuchi and Makoto Furukawa in 2018, and Shunichi Toki, Toshiki Masuda and Shugo Nakamura in 2019. These are Seiyuu that almost everyone agrees are talented singers and some of them even insanely good songwriters. But that's also when you started seeing quite the massive focus on Seiyuu having idol looks. 
for example, in the names I mentioned, Saito, Hatanaka and Uchida all have one or more times been mentioned by Japanese media as seiyuu that have idol looks. But did they have those looks before debut? Not quite. They are all natural as far as looks go, so no worries there, this is not K-pop. However, makeup, skin and hair treatments go a long way towards presenting the perfect image for Seiyuu artists, and thus it has sticked to the music industry. Miano started that trend for Seiyuu artists, then Saito, Hatanaka and Uchida sealed the deal. And thus, since 2017-2018, all Seiyuu that have debuted as artists care a whole lot about their looks, hence, in a way, it's rather easy to spot who's gearing up for a debut or not from the simple yet sudden change of looks. The diets and visual improvements we can conclude by now that this is the one thing that really shows just how much idol culture and fan expectations have influenced Seiyuu artists. Like I mentioned before, a decade or two ago, Seiyuu that made solo debuts or band debuts did not care about how their bodies looked like. They were just going to sing, not to be models or idols. Same thing should apply today, but as you've noticed, it seems that standards have twisted a whole lot to the point that your favorite male Seiyuu, that already have insanely irregular sleep and eating patterns on top of their ridiculously packed schedules, have to go on a diet to look good for their fans. Going on a diet for comebacks or debuts is something so intrinsically idol-like that I couldn't avoid talking about. Especially as it has made its way into the music industry for Seiyuu artists. Let's go over a couple of best-known examples of those drastic diets and visual improvements in order to meet insane standards dictated by idol culture now adapted to Seiyuu artists. When it comes to drastic makeovers for solo debuts, we need to talk about Toshki Masuda. Masuda is well known for his model-like features. Well, he's done model work before and he was, for quite a lot of time, primarily an actor. And among Seiyuu, he's always had a sort of bulky build, yet... For his solo debut in 2019, Toshki Masuda lost a lot of weight. It was skinny for the CDE, this one, but what really shocked a lot of people was how insanely skinny he had gotten by the time of Diver in 2020. Why should a pop rock artist like himself lose that much weight is still a mystery to me. Still, for Masuda, you always have to think about the fact that in the middle of his work as a seiyuu and solo artist, he has also musicals and theater plays he works in and those most of the times require him to sculpt or downsize his body to fit the roles he gets. It doesn't take away from the fact that Toshki Masuda Seiyuu best known for having good looks, having to lose a ridiculous amount of weight to meet standards that you'd think he'd already met even before his solo debut. Makoto Furukawa is yet another good example. Although he's rather good looking on his own, at least in my books he is, for many Furukawa was not appealing at all visually. Thus, before making his debut, Furukawa started losing weight and Lantis gave him the idol treatment. With Furukawa treating his skin to display that perfect image that fans supposedly want to see. As time has passed, Furukawa has been further polishing his image, most recently working on his teeth. Something that, believe it or not, influences the way you speak and sing. At the same time, you could say it is a visual upgrade to further perfect that image of what a CEO artist is supposed to look like. These weren't drastic changes, but still from time to time there goes Furukawa on a diet and it usually means there's a new CD on its way. 
Yumo Uchida, before making his debut in 2018, was kind of chubby, at least by idol standards. It was endearing in a way, and it actually gave him more of a kid vibe than nowadays. A couple of months prior to the announcement of his solo debut, a photo of him on a radio show sparked some interesting conversations, and I must say, on my side I was baffled and worried. For starters, not even one or two weeks before that, it was looking okay. But then that photo was posted and I couldn't help but thinking that it was unhealthy. Just how much weight he had lost in such a short amount of time. However, deep down at the same time, I already knew. Debut incoming. Uchid is known as a big eater, but also as someone that exercises a whole lot to keep that weight required for his multiple CD releases within a year. As a CU artist that performs pop music and is signed to King Records, music label that loves to have their artists promoting their music on TV shows, Uchida has to be constantly monitoring his weight so that he is always ready for a TV appearance. And thus, Uchida manages to maintain the same weight, apparently, and hasn't gone on a drastic weight loss since debut. Still, it is brutal for CU to have to experience going through that initially massive weight loss for a debut. Soma Saito was the same. Before his debut in 2017, Saito was well known for his cheeks being a bit plump and while not chubby, he was never what you'd call a fit or athletic looking Seiyuu and that's perfectly okay. Once again, having chubby cheeks was an endearing feature of Saito's. A couple of months before announcing his solo debut, it was noticeable that he was losing weight at quite the fast pace, which once again for a CEO like Saito that openly mentioned that the only exercise he does is walking, it sounded like there was something else behind all that. And indeed there was, he was gearing up for a solo debut and meeting those visual standards were a must, especially as Sacra Music was aiming for him to be a pop artist. Little did they know that Saito had other plans in store, later establishing himself as a reference as an emo rock artist. Well, he lost so much weight that uh, when he made his solo debut, he was like a completely different person. Contrary to Yumuchida, Soma Saito doesn't promote his music on TV shows beyond the one or two weeks prior to and one week after the CD is released, so he really only has to keep the same looks and does wait for a whole month. And that's one of the reasons why he tends to gain weight between pauses and releases. Whenever there's a new CD in the horizon, he goes on a diet. The most drastic situations happened around the times of Quantum Stranger and My Blue Vacation. Most recently for his We Are In Bloom live tour, he lost a massive amount of weight in less than two months in what Saito mentioned on Dameraji was a diet of tomato juice while cutting almost completely on his alcohol intake in order for him to lose weight much faster than usual. He's also mentioned that most times when close to CD releases he only eats one meal per day, which once again it's not healthy. Out of all Seiyu mentioned in this episode, Soma Saito is the one with the most drastic and unhealthy visual changes before CD releases. Now that we've went through a couple of examples, let's touch a bit in more detail over Seiyu wanting to exercise. Despite it sounding like it's a trend among Seiyu or that they are only working out in order to show a bit of skin for a photo book, truth is the voice Seiyu have and the power they have in their voice are directly influenced by the way they treat their bodies. This is quite the interesting thing that few people pay attention to. 
you use quite a lot of muscles to speak beyond the vocal folds and cords. You use your diaphragm a whole lot. Your lungs also come into play. So how to improve their acting skills or make sure their voice doesn't suffer any drops in quality? See you start exercising. That's why Toshiki Masuda, Yumo Uchida and even Suma Saito, yes, it may sound crazy, all exercise or have started exercising. Developing and fortifying their back muscles is key to having a good, consistent voice. Exercising helps them learning how to breathe properly, which is invaluable for both voice acting and singing. Exercising to be healthy and to better and easily tackle their work is a good thing. Losing a crazy amount of weight just to look good on a CD cover is ridiculous and unhealthy. So let's wrap up this episode. When I say that you can spot solo debuts in the distance as soon as say you start losing weight like crazy, you need to have into attention that this is quite the volatile argument on my side. Today, maybe say you have to lose weight before making a solo debut. This can change in an instant if a trend of bodybuilder like say you starts. I don't see this happening, but well, I also didn't see this whole thing of say you having to prepare themselves for solo debuts like idols do, and here we are. Telling a party for Seiyu is making a debut by losing weight only applies to those Seiyu in their 30s or younger. If your favorite veteran male Seiyu is losing weight, either they have not been eating well, which is common in the Seiyu industry and with all the stress surrounding them, sometimes it doesn't leave them time for them to even eat properly. They may be sick or they may have changed their eating habits and started exercising to have a healthier life. Being healthy as a CU helps giving more power to their voice and exercising helps build more stamina for long recordings. Having muscle on the lower back also helps better deliver their lines. That's why you see many say you in their 30s or close to that generation starting exercising and taking it quite seriously. Conditioning their body goes a long way to sound good for a long time. That's not necessarily them thinking on looking good to show some skin to their fans. Say you are not idols. Few are the ones that undress themselves in order to sell more or use the whole showing some skin gimmick as fan service. Thus, if your favorite male say you is in their 30s or younger, chances are that they are getting ready for something that involves using their image. That leaves us with two options, a photo book or a debut in the music industry. And a solo debut is the most likely of both, especially if they are known for their singing or are active in popular 2D music projects, like I mentioned in the previous episode. As you can tell, much has changed in the Seiyu industry in the last couple of years, especially for Seiyu wanting to be artists. Having to lose weight to meet insane visual standards is something that shouldn't be required unless they want to go head-to-head -head with pop stars and perhaps dream of being stars themselves. But everyone else, especially rock and jazz artists, why should they even have to care about having perfect looks? I've said it a couple of times, my favorite Seiyu could have looks that no one else would like and I'd still support them. After all, first and foremost, I fell in love with their voice, the looks are secondary to that. If those meet my idea of good looks, nice, if those don't, it won't affect me at all. If I wanted looks, I'd look for idols, not Seiyu. However, my stance is, I dare say, in the minority. You see fans more than ever talking about Seiyu's looks and even comparing them which, well, 
It's nice that you enjoy their looks, but hey, perhaps you should support them because of their talents as voice actors? That's why they are in this industry first and foremost. Well, idol culture has certainly been influencing Seiyu artists and this whole thing of Seiyu going on a diet is the perfect example of that. Now tell me, what do you think about idol culture influencing the way Seiyu artists approach a solo debut or even their image as artists? Let me know in the comments below and remember leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of Seiyu Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the Hand That Feeds HQ's weekly mail Seiyu and music related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of Seiyu Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around.